Hello, everybody. Welcome. You're watching Earth Sky, and I'm Deborah Bird, back here with a word about Saharan dust. And isn't this a cool animation? It's from NOAA's GOES 14 satellite in 2020. And we're approaching the peak of Saharan dust season right now here in the US. We had a major event uh, earlier this month, and now another one is underway. And I am pleased to present Rachel Dunsing. Rachel, did I say your name right? Dunsing. <laughs> Dunsing, Rachel Dunsing, who is a broadcast. I only ever see your name written down. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rachel is a broadcast meteorologist and a climate reporter for CBS 17 in Raleigh, North Carolina. And she also reports on weather for Earth Sky. So Rachel, hi, welcome. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Always glad to again sort of see you face to face and get a chance to to talk a little bit more about weather and climate and all that fun stuff instead of just writing about it. Although writing about it's great too. <laughs> it is, it is. Okay, so tell us about this dust plume that is, uh, is it here? Did it, did it hit Florida? So I think it's starting to approach Florida. It's starting to move in. So we have a couple of plumes that tend to come off of West Africa this time of year. Uh, we're kind of getting into peak dust season. So we start to see it really ramp up sort of late spring into early summer. And you can kind of see the plumes there on that animation. So as we get more into July and early August, that's when we have the biggest plumes that start to move off. But as we start to see these plumes of dust, they can move far enough west, they move east to west, that it can move into the Caribbean and occasionally to the Gulf Coast and sometimes even the Southeast United States coast as well. A lot of folks normally in Florida are the ones who are dealing with the dust. Um, so there's likely going to be some dust around uh, Florida, likely through the weekend, probably not as thick as we've seen it even just past recent weeks, but you're definitely going to see some and you know the dust is there when it just looks a little bit hazy outside and then of course when we get to sunrises and sunsets when things are a lot more vibrant yeah and this is a, a, a tweet from uh, national weather service in miami and they're talking about reduced air quality uh in florida and and they're you know advising people that if you're sensitive to that kind of dust and stuff in the air that you know you want to be careful this weekend because it's going to be out there so yeah but we will uh so, so so the effects we will get some vivid sunsets over florida probably this weekend huh yeah and that was one thing when i actually lived in florida when the saharan dust would come over it was always okay go out and chase some sunrises or go out and chase some sunsets because obviously sunrises and sunsets are beautiful no matter where you are across the world but especially in florida there's something magical about sunrises and sunsets over the water and all of that but when you add that layer of dust because the reason that our sunrises and sunsets are so vibrant anyway is due to the the wavelength of light and so the more warm colors like the yellows the oranges and the reds those have that longer wavelength anyway. So when the sun is at a lower angle, we see more of those warm, vibrant colors. And so when you have the dust around, it kind of makes those even brighter, even more vibrant. Um, so an amazing sunset in Florida, you know, in June is going to be even more amazing when you have the dust around um, just because of the way that it really just makes those warm colors even more vibrant. Okay. And are we going to get, like I'm in Texas, are we going to get some of that dust this weekend? Probably not this weekend, but there's always a possibility if you have a really large plume of dust that it could work its way all the way across the Gulf and really impact anywhere along the Gulf Coast. So if you look up and you see a little bit of haze, it very well could be at least a little bit of that dust. Um, but normally when we have again those really thick plumes, which typically occur more in July and August, those are the ones that can really travel across the Gulf impacting Florida and even into Texas and being able to see that. So probably not this weekend, but hey, it's never a bad idea to go out and look at a sunset or a sunrise, right? That's for sure. I can see the sunrise from my house. I live on a hill. So oh, I can, lovely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, so you talked about this a little bit. 
uh, you know, how usual or unusual is it? So we're just in a time of year right now where we're getting some dust booms. But what about the rest of the year? I mean, is it is it is it really just mostly a summertime phenomenon or does it happen throughout the year or what's the story on that? We normally notice it in the summer because it the dust really starts to get going um, in the Saharan desert. Obviously, the D Saharan dust is from the Saharan desert in Africa. Um, so we really start to see it get going normally late spring, but it really starts to emerge when we have tropical waves. It kind of pushes that dust up into the air and then it goes with the easterly winds all the way across the Atlantic. So we really see it more so during the summer just because that's when we start to see more of that dust develop. Um, it can happen really at any point during the year, but it's more so a late spring and especially a summertime phenomenon. Um, and I, I think you're going to ask me about this and kind of touch on it, but it does have a correlation with when we start to see um, more tropical development or even less tropical development, how much dust we have in the air. So what do you mean by tropical development? Yeah, okay. so when we think about this dust, again, it gets lofted up into the air and it actually sits about a mile or so off the surface, whether that's the surface of the wow. ground or more likely the surface of the water as it's, again, moving from east to west. But it's actually, especially with the thickest plumes, it can be about two to two and a half miles thick. So that is a wow. really, really thick layer of very dry, very warm, very dusty air. And if we think about tropical cyclones with tropical storms and hurricanes, they need warm water, first of all, to develop. That's sort of their basis, that what makes a tropical cyclone a tropical cyclone. But they also need nice calm winds and really moist air, like all the way up through, we call it the column, basically all the way up into the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere in order for it to develop and, and to strengthen. So if we add in a even a lower end, two mile thick of dry, dusty air, it's going to choke off a lot of that moisture that the tropical system needs to develop. So if it doesn't have that moisture, it's not going to be able to develop very easily. So when we have these dust plumes that come off of Africa and move over the main development region, if you speak, um, of the tropical Atlantic Ocean, these tropical systems don't have the moisture that it needs to develop. So if we have dust in the air, it's a lot harder for tropical storms and hurricanes to develop. And if we, wow. think, if we think back on when we normally get tropical storms and hurricanes developing. So we know we're in hurricane season. It starts June 1st. It runs through November 30th. It's a long season. But our peak hurricane season is typically the middle of September. And we start to see our dust production, or at least the dust coming off of the Atlantic, we start to see that go down normally about August. So it's not a perfect correlation, but there's definitely something to be said about seeing less dust or seeing the dust production go down in August and then seeing our tropical storm and hurricane production go up in September. So it's it's kind of this really fascinating uh, correlation that, you know, we don't normally think about with that dust would have that much of an impact on tropical development, um, but it does. And, and meteorologists and forecasters play very close attention to it during hurricane season. Yeah, it's like a double whammy, right? Because the, <laughs> the hurricane season would be warm, would be more intense anyway, because the water's warmer, you were telling me, yeah. in September. And yeah, and that's what, mm -hmm. and that warm water is fueling the stronger hurricanes and then mm -hmm. the dust drops. So yeah, double whammy. Yeah, <laughs> and also the dust tends to have some really gusty winds associated with it as well. Most of the time on average about 20 to 25 miles per hour. Um, and that's another thing. Hurricanes don't like to have to fight against strong winds in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. It tears them apart. So in addition to having dry air that's sort of cutting off of the moisture, it's also adding strong winds in that same layer, which is working against any potential development. So it's the dry, dusty air and also some some stronger winds tearing it apart as well. So yeah, we, we like cool. to see dust during hurricane season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Who knew? I, had, I didn't know that. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we normally yeah. just think about okay. it for, you know, the, the vibrant sunrises, but there's a lot to it. There is, there is. Um, okay, we got to get out of here, but I want to ask you one more thing, and that is, what is something that most people don't realize about Saharan dust events? 
I think people don't realize how common it is. You know, again, it's it's something that happens pretty much every year, pretty much every season. And we can have these, they call them outbreaks every three to five days. So oh, wow. occasionally, you know, you can see these plumes coming off of Africa a couple of times a week. That doesn't mean they always make it to the United States or the Caribbean or anything like that a couple of times a week. It just depends on the strength and, and how much uh, dust there is in that outbreak. But yeah, it's it's pretty frequent. It kind of happens all the time. And it just, when it's a particularly strong one and it can work its way across the Atlantic, that's when we really start to pay attention to it. At least here in the States. Special, thank you. Thank you so much. This is so interesting. Thank you for um, having I, me. Oh, what happened? <laughs> Rachel. I think Rachel's not here anymore. Well, we're ending anyway. Oh yeah, she's 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 gone. Okay, <laughs> that was Rachel Dunsing. She is a broadcast meteorologist and a climate reporter for CBS 17 in Raleigh, North Carolina. And she also reports on weather for Earth Sky. And we're so grateful for her uh, to come and tell us about Saharan dust. So uh, I'll be, the June solstice is coming up and we're going to be hosting a solstice party live on June 20th, and you are all invited to come to the party. Uh, we wanna know what is your personal solstice? So you can submit photos to Earth Sky right here, ECP, that stands for Earth Sky Community Photos, ecp.earthsky.org, submit a photo. We wanna see your personal solstice photo, or you can submit stories uh, at the contact button at our website, earthsky.org. So please tell us about or show us your special place or tradition for the June solstice. Uh, I'll be back on Monday with some details about the solstice, and we hope you'll join us then. One Earth, one sky, Earth sky.